Hey guys, my name is Miss Angie and I'm so excited to be here with you today to, to share your Sunday school lesson. It is the end of the month. Tomorrow starts a new month. Spring is coming. I'm so excited about that. I love spring and I hope you guys are all doing well. Cannot wait to see you again in person. Um, let me sit up a little bit taller so you can see my sweatshirt. It says Wintergreen and that is the name of the school where I work. And we had an exciting happening this week that I wanted to share with you. We had a team of students that participated in the Battle of the Books and they did really well. And they were so happy and excited. And I remember thinking to myself, man, it's a shame that um, all the kids didn't get to participate in this and experience um, what it was. And they all had the opportunity. We were, were trying to recruit people. Um, at the beginning of the year but once we had enough people who were interested we kind of we kind of stopped because we were only allowed to have 12 people on the team and even though um, maybe some of you guys have been part of a team and you know that you have to work well together and you have to listen to your leaders and it's that way in the church too um, but there's a big difference there are not any limits to how many people can be a part of Jesus's family in the church and in fact that's one of the things that Jesus wants us to do more than anything is to always be sharing and um, reaching out to people who don't know Jesus and um, inviting them to be a part of his family and a part of the church. So I am very thankful for that. So we have been talking the past few weeks about what the church is. And now we know that it's not a building. It's all the people who gather together in their communities and um, to serve and worship God. So we're going to move on to a new big picture question for the next several weeks and we're going to explore the why. Why does the church exist? And we'll have a story from the Bible that's going to explore that some and then we'll go back and we'll try to answer that question. So the early church had a lot of struggles. We have learned about some people who were selfish, some people who were arrested, um, hurt, even killed because of their faith. But we also know that God was working all along to um, use those struggles to grow and strengthen the church and the power of the Holy Spirit is what makes that possible. So our story today is about a man named Philip who was led by the Holy Spirit to um, talk to a man from Ethiopia and teach him about Jesus and brought him into Jesus's family as a new believer. It's from the book of Acts in the New Testament. I'm gonna read it to you first and then we'll watch the video. Philip and the Ethiopian. An angel of the Lord told Philip, a follower of Jesus, to go to a desert road between Jerusalem and Gaza. So Philip went. On the road was a man from Ethiopia. The man had come to worship in Jerusalem and now he was on his way home. He sat in his chariot reading aloud the words of the prophet Isaiah. The Holy Spirit told Philip to go to the chariot. So Philip ran up to it. Do you understand what you are reading? Philip asked the man. The official replied, how can I unless someone explains it to me? He invited Philip into his chariot and Philip sat with him. The official was reading these words from Isaiah. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter and as a lamb is silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. He was treated unfairly and his life is taken away. The official asked, was Isaiah talking about himself or someone else? Isaiah was talking about the Messiah, so Philip began to tell the man the good news about Jesus. As they traveled down the road, they came to some water. What would keep me from being baptized, the official asked. Then the official told the chariot to stop. He and Philip went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Holy Spirit took Philip away. The official continued home, and he was very happy. Now let's watch the video of the story, and we'll talk about it when you come back. An angel of the Lord told Philip, a follower of Jesus, to go to a desert road between Jerusalem and Gaza. So Philip went. On the road was a man from Ethiopia. He was an important official to the queen of Ethiopia. The man had come to worship in Jerusalem, and now he was on his way home. He sat in his chariot, reading aloud the words of the prophet Isaiah. 
the Holy Spirit told Philip to go to the chariot. So Philip ran up to it. Do you understand what you are reading? Philip asked the man. The official replied, How can I unless someone explains it to me? He invited Philip into his chariot, and Philip sat with him. The official was reading these words from Isaiah. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb is silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. He was treated unfairly, and his life is taken away. The official asked, Was Isaiah talking about himself or someone else? Isaiah was talking about the Messiah. So Philip began to tell the man the good news about Jesus. As they traveled down the road, they came to some water. What would keep me from being baptized? The official asked. Then the official told the chariot to stop. He and Philip went down into the water and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Holy Spirit took Philip away. The official continued home, and he was very happy. The Ethiopian official knew what the Old Testament prophets said, but he did not understand that they spoke about Jesus. The Holy Spirit led Philip to help the official understand the good news about Jesus. Jesus died on the cross for our sins and was raised from the dead, just like the Old Testament prophets said. Wasn't that a great video? The Holy Spirit really set up just a perfect opportunity for Philip, and I'm so glad that he was so obedient because that led to him bringing in a new believer. Um, so about that immediate obedience, um, that's something we can learn a lot about from this story. Um, Philip didn't complain about the long desert road he had to travel. He, um, when he was told to go up to the man, he, he ran up to the chariot and was so eager. He didn't hesitate to explain to him what he was reading about what Isaiah the prophet said. And, um, and the man from Ethiopia was also obedient. Once he believed, then he asked to be baptized. And then he went back to Ethiopia and was so happy to share what he had learned with other people. And that's, that's God's whole purpose for us as a church, okay? Which brings us back to our big picture question. Why does the church exist? The church exists to glorify God by worshiping him, showing his love, and telling others about Jesus. Let's say that again. That's so important to remember, and we're going to be talking about this for the next several weeks. Why does the church exist? The church exists to glorify God by worshiping him, showing his love, and telling others about Jesus. Now let's do um, our video with Pastor Brian with um, questions from kids. He's got some great um, advice for us. We'll be right back. Hi there, I'm Pastor Brian and it's time for questions from kids. Paisley from Iowa Falls, Iowa asks, Is it okay to be friends with someone who isn't a Christian? Paisley, what a wonderful question. I am glad you asked. Big answer first before we go any farther. Yes, it is okay. It's not just okay. It's good that you're friends with people who are not Christians. But let me unpack that a little bit more for a minute or two. You know, first of all, I think the reason for this is, is what we saw in today's Bible story, how the Holy Spirit led Philip to tell this Ethiopian man about Jesus. That God's heart, his desire is that we be in relationship with people who don't know him so that we can tell them about him. That's the big reason it's good for you to be friends with people who are not Christians. It's not just okay, you should try to be. Now here's the thing, God wants us to care about all people like he cares about all people. Think about Jesus, he was a friend of sinners, wasn't he? He, he got yelled at by some of the Jewish leaders because he would have meals with sinners, people who were outcasts. And we should follow that too. We should love and care about people who don't know Jesus because we value them as people. But here's the thing, we really need to be careful as well. We want to influence our friends who are not believers for Jesus instead of us allowing ourselves to be influenced by them in bad ways. That can happen. 
And so as we're friends with unbelievers, we really need to be careful not to let them change how we're living. That can happen at times. I would also say this, our best friends should be believers. Ideally, your best friend should be somebody who has the most in common with you. And God is so important. How can we really be the best of friends with somebody who doesn't share something so important? So again, I think you can be best friends with somebody who's not a believer, but I think it's best that you are best friends with somebody who shares Jesus in their lives like you share him and you have him in your life. So here's a question back for you. How many people do you encounter each day? And how many of them need to hear the good news about Jesus? I just love what Pastor Ryan has to say. He always has some really good advice for us. Let's move on to our um, key passage for the next several weeks. It's Colossians 1.18. Colossians is in the New Testament, written by the Apostle Paul. He wrote this to the people of Colossae. He wanted them to give Jesus the respect and the glory that he deserves and to remember that we exist as a church to tell people about him. The verse goes like this. Colossians 1.18. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead. So that in everything, he might have the supremacy. I'm going to read it one more time. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead. So that in everything, he might have the supremacy. Colossians 1.18. So, um, I enjoyed our time together. Let's um, close in prayer, if you'll bow your heads. Heavenly Father, help us to love you most and obey you with joy. Give us courage to share the gospel boldly with everyone we meet. We thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit to guide us and help us share the good news about Jesus. Please keep us safe. And we especially pray for the Wolf family this week. In his name we pray. Amen. Hope you guys have a great week, and I hope to see you soon. Bye.